Okay, I've got another integral on the board here today from MIT Integration B 2023. Problem number five, we have the integral from zero to four of x choose five dx. Okay, I was really liking this problem. This is, I think, my favorite one that I've seen so far from 2023. And at first I was pretty confused because I don't think I've ever um, had an integral quite like that. I've never had an integral with the uh, binomial coefficient. So let's see how this works. I have the definition over here on the right of the binomial coefficient. We pronounce this as n choose k. And if you're not familiar with this, you can just use this definition. We'll have in the numerator n factorial, or in this case, it's going to be x factorial. And then we'll have n minus k factorial times k factorial. So let's just rewrite this in this format and see how it looks. Okay, so now I've rewritten this in terms of factorials using our definition over here on the right. And it's starting to get a little more familiar. What we can do is let's expand out these factorials, particularly let's expand out this x factorial. If we expand out this x factorial, we can get some cancellation and get some further simplification. So let's see how that's gonna look. Okay, so here I've expanded this thing all the way out. I didn't go all the way to one. We don't know what x is, so we can't do that really. But if I take it all the way down to x minus five factorial, then what happens is we can have this cancel with this. Okay, and we can take our five factorial and bring it out front. And now we just have a big polynomial. So from here, we could just multiply this whole thing out. We'll get a big polynomial. We'll use the power rule and finish it off, except that's gonna be kind of tedious. So I wanna see if we can find a shortcut. I'd like to do a U substitution, okay, to maybe simplify this whole thing and get this to clean up a little quicker. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use this middle term for my U. I think that's gonna be ideal. I think it's also gonna help with the bounds. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say U equals X minus two. And then du is going to be just equal to dx. And then we'll make the substitution. So we're going to have 1 over 5 factorial. Then plugging a 4 in here, we're going to have 2 for our upper bound. Plugging a 0 in, we're going to have a minus 2. Part of the reason why I did that, right, so we have this symmetry. Then just with a little rearranging, x is going to be, if we add 2, we have x equals u plus 2. And then these are all, these terms are decreasing. So we're going to have u plus 1 times u times u minus one, u minus two, du. And at this point, you might think that we're in the same spot, right? Because then we could just multiply that out, but then it's still tedious. Okay, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna multiply this out selectively. I'm gonna multiply this one times this one. So we'll have like a difference of squares here, and then I'll do this one times this one. So let's clean up the board and see how that's all gonna look. So here I've rearranged this integral and I've done my um, multiplying this times this and this times this. It, it didn't really matter. We could have done it different ways. It's just this is going to help me show it a little easier. It's going to be a little cleaner this way, I think, just to see it. And then from here, I think what we can do here is we can finish this off using odd and even functions. Okay, we have this definition over here on the right. I think you've seen me, if you've watched my videos, you've probably seen me use this like 10 times. But it's so convenient because it can finish off our integrals really quick. So when we have an integral where the function fx is odd and we have a symmetrical symmetric bounds around the y-axis, the whole integral is going to be zero. So then if I can show that this is odd, the whole thing is odd, then we just have zero for our integral. So let's see if we can show that. Now the thing to notice is we have a square term here, so this term is even. Similar here, this term is also going to be even. And then on this u term, we could look at this as a one in odd power. So this term is odd and multiplying, we can multiply however many even functions we want. If we have one odd function, the whole thing is gonna be odd. Let me just show this in a little more detail so it's clear. Okay, so we have this definition of our odd function right here that we wanna show. If we have a function and we input the negative, like ne if we input negative u and we get the negative of the whole function, then the function's odd. And I'm claiming my functions, this whole integral, so I'm saying my f of u is u squared minus 4, u squared minus 1 times u. So all I need to do is plug in a negative u into this and see what happens. Okay, so I have my negative u input, and I just need to like multiply this whole thing out and do some simplification, and we should be done. So minus u squared is going to be u squared minus 4. Minus u, again, this is going to be u squared minus 1. Um, and then a u here. Well, I'll bring the minus all the way out front, so we'll have like a minus in front. But then notice this whole thing is our f of u. And so we've shown it that f minus u equals minus f of u. Pretty easy, right? But then because we have an odd integral with symmetric bounds, 
What we have in front doesn't matter. The whole integral is going to be just zero. That's it. Fun problem today. MIT 2023, problem five. Thanks for watching. Please like and subscribe. Have a great day.